I'm going to go beyond earnings, uh, Jim, to your new transaction acquiring the leasing efforts of the largest fleet of 747s in the world. This is the cargo business mostly of Atlas Air. How do you dive into such a troubled industry as COVID, Asia, moving cargo, and say the opportunity is now? Well, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a classic Apollo transaction. We, we know the industry well. We've been around it for decades. We've successfully navigated it, uh, no pun intended, in terms of a variety of other investments in the space. Um, and it's a classic opportunity for us to use our great industry skills, our, our great capital formation skills, uh, and do something we think has got a lot of fundamental value where purchase price matters. So, uh, you know, a lot to talk about Apollo today. That's one transaction. Um, but uh, very, very happy with what we've done in, the, in that situation. Well, let's talk about the inflows. $36 billion, I think $13 billion after quarter end in a first close of your next flagship PE fund. Just going through some of these numbers. Jim, as you look at the opportunities in front of you, where are they? What can you do that the banks can't do that you're excited about? Well, listen, as you said, Jonathan, it's a very foggy environment out there. A lot, a lot of uh, dispersion on views on where rates and other things are going. And that's when we do well. Uh, you know, record record FRE force for the quarter, record SRE, you know, capital formation, deployment origination strong. Um, you know, for us, it was a great quarter in terms of, you know, investor dialogue. As you said, $36 billion in the quarter. Uh, we closed $13 billion on, on our new flagship fund 10. Um, and for us, you know, we, we are, this is the kind of markets that we thrive. Uh, when others are a bit paralyzed or markets are closed, we bring our, our flexible capital, our permanent capital, our ingenuity uh, to transactions. And, you know, I know you mentioned the, the Atlas Air, but for us, New Fortress Energy was a great transaction, Air France. You know, in, in New Fortress Energy, basically, they we've been with this company for a couple of years. We've been a financing partner. They put their liquid LNG products or vehicles into a in JV. Uh, we provided the equity, but the bank market was shut. Typically, most folks would have to put their pencil down. Yeah. Uh, we we really marshaled our resources and raised the billion for financing uh, to have a successful transaction. So for us, these are the markets we thrive. Uh, you know, firm is doing extraordinary and hitting on all cylinders. Jim, you said that the markets are closed, and they were for the most part until last month, where they reopened with a vengeance, and you saw everybody flood back to the market, money pile into even the most speculative debt, people basically sounding the all clear sign. What do you make of that, and how do you sort of adjust your view than perhaps in May when you said that recession was one third to two thirds of your base case, and you were talking about not taking that duration or liquidity risk? Yeah. I think you got to differentiate between a rally in credit and the markets being open. The reality is, and it's been well publicized, that uh, you know a lot of financing commitments um, have been hung, if you will, uh, nowhere near what they were in 08, probably 80 billion plus or minus versus the four to 500 billion. But new financing commitments are very challenging to secure today. Uh, we're a leader in private credit. We extend credit. We borrow in those markets as well. Uh, but the reality is the markets, the IG markets open, uh, but the lower quality, uh, high yield markets, still very few transactions are getting done. Very few new commitments are being made on buyouts. So it's uh, it's not as clear as you said. Again, don't, please don't differentiate a rally in credit um, versus really an open, thriving uh, financing market. Uh, Jim, can I ask you what you think of that rally in credit, though? 140 basis points of spread tightening on high yield in the yeah. last month alone. We've got yeah. guests lining up calling that wishful thinking. What do you call it? Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting. We, we, we typically, when, when, when spreads go to 600, we usually, that's a buy signal for us historically. Uh, they were there for just a couple of, uh, a short period of time. As you said, they've rallied dramatically. Uh, it feels like the rally, you know, I, I would say they're on the richer side of fair value than they are the attractive side of fair value. But I think it's interesting to contrast that to the private markets right now. You can, you know, a year ago, uh, high yield indexes were in the mid fours, maybe touching five. You can issue a, be part of a, a, a senior club in private credit right now with spreads, you know, SOFR plus 650, which is basically almost touching nine and a half, 10 percent high quality first lien position, top of the capital structure, 30, 40 LTV. So that's an interesting marketplace. And we're open, we've been active. 
uh, at Apollo and at Midcap. The, the generic on the run high yield market not particularly interesting, and I suspect you're right. Um, you know, Lisa mentioned I I was of the view that uh, you know a, a recession was in the cards in 23. Yeah. We still believe it will be. I, I don't think it's going to be a deep historical pre a recession. Um, as we all know, the numbers right now you're having you know negative GDP numbers with 400,000 uh, uh, new employment per month. So it's not your father's recession by any means. It's a different kind of environment. Um, but, you know, from our perspective, uh, if you have the ability to navigate, it is quite interesting as many are on pause. Uh, Jim, I've got 20 seconds to squeeze this in. This is the question where the person behind your camera starts waving their hand saying, don't answer it. You were considering helping Elon Musk finance that Twitter bid, given how it's fallen apart. Has that left a bit of taste in your mouth around doing business with him potentially in the future? Just a yes or no, your thoughts on it? We're, we're a big player in the global financing markets. Uh, we, we finance lots of folks. Uh, we're very thoughtful about what we do. Uh, and we got a long-term track record to prove that out.